What about a team that didn't make any signings at all last summer? Boy, they've been busy this summer. Uh, Spurs, so the final look at their uh, transfer activity. A couple of uh, late arrivals on the final day. Uh, Ryan Sessegnon and Giovanni Lo Celso, the Argentine, adding to what Mauricio Pochettino had already done earlier in the summer. On Lo Celso, I had a chance to ask Sid Lowe about his qualities just a couple of weeks ago. It is true that I think you would look at him and, and, and analyse his performances last year with Betis and, and say that there is that slight question mark about taking that extra step. But you may, bear in mind, this is a player who came from Paris Saint-Germain who wasn't really getting opportunities there. But once he was given the opportunity, played really, really well last year. And I, I think it's entirely natural, particularly in a market as inflated as this, that people are talking about high fees for him. But I think if he's given a team that works well around him and he's given the freedom to either play um, in, in a kind of a number 10 role or perhaps a little bit deeper or maybe in one of those kind of false wide midfielder roles where he's encouraged to come inside. I think he's got vision. I think he's got technique. I think he could be a very good player for someone. Giovanni Lo Celso, uh, we saw him uh, impressed with Argentina in the uh, Copa America. Uh, Julian Laurent, let's bring you in on, uh, on Lo Celso and Spurs in general. How impressed are you? Very impressed. I mean, they, they made more signing uh, just today uh, than they did in the last three transfer windows. So, very good day for them with, with Lo Celso and, and Cessignon. Cessignon is, is a great coup because he only had one year on, on his contract left at Fulham and, and £25 million, pound, I think, for, for a player like him at 19 years of age is, is a great bit of business. And Dombele, we talked about it a lot. And, and Lo Celso, I agree with Sid, if he adapts quickly to the way Pochettino wants him to play in that team, and to the, to the different style of, of the Premier League. He would be a success there because he has great ability, great vision, and, and, and his passing would be perfect for his relationship with Harry Kane, for example. I think it... Ndombele is the one that uh, everybody's kind of, yeah. kind of excited about to see yeah. uh, what he's going to do and how dynamic he's going to be. But let's say also, you know, he's not the, he's not the physically most imposing player, predominantly left-footed, uh, but very good balance. You know, let, he's not afraid to take the ball in with, with under pressure. Good vision, good pass of the ball, as the boys have mentioned. And another, another creative player uh, for Tottenham, as long as he can come in and, and get up to speed with you know, the Premier League and, and the physicality, which I'm sure, having played in Spain, shouldn't really be a massive problem for him. Can, can they now challenge the top two because of this, this summer they've had? Well, they're going to give it a good goal. Yeah. Mm. They're going to give it a good goal. I mean, they, but they are all, they are still going to have to be reliant and not getting too many injuries. I suppose the fact is Ericsson didn't go in the transfer window as well uh, gives them gives yeah. them another option. Could, right. could still happen. Oh well, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He could go to a European yeah. club. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, and he's trying. I know he wants to go to Real Madrid, don't we all? <laughs> they've, 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 they've strengthened where they needed it, though. I mean, their problems for me were always in the middle of the park when you're relying on Sissoko and Winks. They're good players, but they're basic players. You know, now you've got you've got a bit of variety. The Chelsea can get forward and can 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 play a pass. And you got and Dembele, who Craig said is the most exciting one because in league oh, this guy actually did everything. You he's know, he's big and strong, he yeah. can run with the ball, he can pass the ball. So the potential there. It's huge. I think what you're seeing from Spurs and, and credit to Pochettino is with continued speculation around Ericsson, I think in Lo Celso they have a, somebody who can come in and, and fill that void if he does go because we all know the kind of issues that the, the two differing transfer windows can possess. But it, this is a, a, a good-looking Spurs team that, that continues to get better and better. I don't think they're going to surpass any of the front two, no. but I think with these signings they put, certainly put a little bit more distance between themselves and who you expect to be the chasing don't, pack. Don't forget Spurs had a player like that, an, an, an older player now left to go to China, but when he was in his pump, pump Dembele, yeah. uh, you know, big and strong and could get, get, get around the pitch and really comfortable in the ball. This is a younger version, but much more mobile. Mm. Much more mo mo mobile and much more dynamic, so it's a, it's a great move for Spurs. It, Ian, with these late additions, uh, is it enough to turn a two-horse race into a, a genuine three-horse race? I think Spurs will get closer. Remember, they were 27 points off the top last season. The interesting thing I think, think about Lo Celso arriving is, uh, and the qualities that uh, Sid Lowe was describing, is 
Is he a threat to Deli Alley's place in the team? Because I sense there's a little bit of disquiet at Tottenham about the repeated hamstrings of uh, Deli Alley. And you saw Maurizio Pochettino, the manager, saying the other day he's got to start listening to his body better. And I don't think his form's been great for a couple of seasons now. So he might not walk into that team anymore. They've got they've got more of a choice in there. They've they've beefed it up a little bit, but they need to keep Har Harry Kane fit this season, don't they? Yeah, they do. A uh, cu couple of final Spurs things for you, Jules. Uh, Dybala, of course, they were also interested in. Was it just that image, image rights thing that was the, the hold-up? And also, do you think Ericsson will actually eventually leave? So, for Dybala, yeah, I think it was always a complicated deal to make and to agree personal terms uh, with him and with his agent because of that issue with, with image rights, which belongs to another company who asked a, um, a lot of money for them. And, and also, the time was so limited. They started that deal far too late in this transfer window to make, to make it happen, although they tried really hard. And Pochettino was pushing, pushing for it. He would have loved Dybala and Lo Celso, both in his team uh, this season. Um, that, that's a, that, that one is a shame. Uh, and for Ericsson, the problem Ericsson has is that it seems that he only wants to go to Real Madrid. And, and right now, um, Real Madrid is a no for him. And it's unlikely that they would, they would go for him, uh, I suppose, and, 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 and spend around 80 million euros for him. And I don't know who else then would come for him. So, again, I think it's one of them where Ericsson, for me at the moment, looks like he could well be staying as Spurs this season.